from the shores of Summer Lake in Tigard, Oregon. It's the Portland Tim Beers Podcast, a show featuring two guys who love craft beer and Portland Timbers soccer. And now, here are your hosts, Jason and Gary. Tim Beers, I'm Jason. I'm Gary. We're the uh, Portland Tim Beers. We talk a little about soccer, beer, and pretty much whatever else we want. Which could be anything. Boom. So what's going on, buddy? Uh, not a not a lot of a lot of work. A lot of work. Four week hiatus. Listeners are probably like, you know what? We've got better things to listen to to you two uh, inconsistent <laughs> bastards. But you know what? We got a lot saved up. Well, we have not been recording and pushing stuff out. Yes, we have. We've been prepping, prepping, baby. Ton of prep. So uh, let's see, Tiger Town Brewing. What do you think of them? Um, I hadn't heard of them until you brought them up. Uh, apparently, it's a little tiny place, but uh, pretty yeah. fantastic from what I've heard. Hey, you ever heard of the Painted Hills? I have. Out in eastern Oregon. It's supposed to be absolutely beautiful when the flowers are all blooming. They've got this uh, striped-looking soil that uh, basically is from, like, years and or centuries or millions of years of stuff that's just kind of built up and so like one at one point one layer is like an ocean at one point is like a rainforest at one point it's like a desert which it is now so you get these different color variations in the soil and so when the sun hits it it looks like somebody took like watercolor brushes and painted the soil huh and Within about 10 miles of that place, a little teeny town in Mitchell, Oregon, or I guess the town is Mitchell, Oregon, but a little brewery <laughs> in the town of Mitchell, Oregon called Tiger Town Brewing. Tiger Town. So I uh, took the kid, took the wife, cruised out. Oh, Jewel was with us. The girlfriend was with us. Not my girlfriend, but my son's. <laughs> and uh, that'd be awkward. <laughs> awkward. <laughs> I guess maybe not in some circles. Yeah, but some circles, I guess that's acceptable. But yeah, not my circle. No. Um, but yeah, we rolled out to Painted Hills, checked that out, and I'm like, hey, I got an idea. Let's hit up Tiger Town Brewing. So I called them the night before, and they're like, yeah, let's hook up for an interview. So interviewed the guys at Tiger Town, and it is an awesome, awesome story. So we actually r- recorded the interview in their cool room. Which literally is what you and I have talked about. If we were to like make one, styrofoam walls in like a closet with yeah. an air conditioner blowing in yeah. that's set on a thermostat. And that's the only temperature control they have for this little brewery in Mitchell. Huh. So Stout Tanks and Kettles is their maker of their brew set. Of course, we're familiar with them. The listeners should be familiar. Right. Tigard's own Stout Tanks. And so uh, sat down with the guys. They were Man, they were hopping. They were busy. They were busy, busy, busy. But they made time, and so let's play the interview and learn about Tiger Town Brewing. Cool. All right, Jason here from the Tim Beers. I am here at Tiger Town Brewing, and uh, we decided to stop in, and they've been gracious enough to offer us an interview chance uh, to look at what's going on here. And um, with that, uh, I'll let you introduce yourself to the listeners on the show and tell us where Tiger Town's at and what the brewery's about. All right. My name is Sean Hawkins. I'm owner and brewmaster at Tiger Town Brewing Company, Mitchell, Oregon. We're about eight miles from the Painted Hills, so we're right on a major tourist route. And with a town of 120, that's what keeps us going. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. We rolled into town, went to the Painted Hills. It is chaos over there during, uh, I think this is the first thing people are getting out and about and like, hey, what can we do that's open and fresh air? Um, And then I come over here to Mitchell, which I've been into Mitchell before. had an ice cream cone down the street. Sure. And, uh, but I'm like, holy crap, I mean, look at the brewery. The brewery's going crazy. So you guys have been very busy today. Yeah, it's it's been really busy. This is our our fifth year in business and it's grown every year and... Yeah, you know, to the point now we can barely keep up with it. No, that's fantastic. So, so I'm looking here at Stout Tanks and Kettles. I mean, that's where mm-hmm. we've had them on the podcast. We buy all of our equipment from Stout Tanks and Kettles there in yeah. the Tigard. Um, <clears throat> so, what made you choose Stout Tanks? Uh, did they come over here and help set up the brew system? Talk to me a little bit about why you chose the system that you've got. Um, I had 
they had just been on my radar from being a home brewer. I had always looked at because they were local. I'm from Portland originally, so okay. you know, I had known about stout tanks and kettles. And then I hooked up with uh, one of the sales guys over there, Mike Palandino, who's a really good guy, and has got me set up with a lot of good stuff. And, you know, we're working on the expansion right now, trying to set up an even bigger system. So they're Sweet. a good company to work with. So are you uh, all gas, you electric? Talk to me about a little we bit. We are electric. Doing. Okay. So yeah, two barrel electric brewery. And out here, we'll probably step up to another larger electric brewery because getting, you know, propane, there's obviously no natural gas out here. Right. Just getting resources out here is difficult, but the electricity is always available. Huh, great. So beer-wise, decent beer selection. I believe my wife had the uh, light that you've got on. Yeah. And then I've had the milk stout and I tried the amber. So talk to me about, about a little bit about beer selection. I know you were a home brewer. Mm -hmm. um, so how did you select the beers that are on the menu? How often do you introduce new beers into the lineup? Gotcha. Well, we are primarily focused on European style ales. So I like English and Scottish ales best. It's what I've always liked to brew. So when we started this place, I'm like, you know, there's enough IPAs in the world. There's enough great IPAs in the world. You know, I, I, I make an IPA. I mean, we, we have a few different IPAs right. that we make, but, you know, our specialty is really those English and Scotch ales. Sweet. Yeah. And certainly I love the milk stout, especially on, when it's a warm day today. People traditionally don't aren't drinking stouts on a warm day, right? right? I do. I'm one of those guys. Sure. Um, I also uh, enjoyed the amber. The amber was fantastic. Good. Very good. And my wife's loving that light, light ale that's out there. So. Nice. Do you lager at all? I mean, we're sitting in the brewer shop here, right? Right. Traditionally cooled by like some sort of cooling system. You've got an air conditioner that's going. Right. Right. How have you tried to lager? I have not lagered as a professional brewer okay. simply because we don't have a glycol system in this tiny place. Right. You know, which is one of the things we have to brew seasonally. So when it gets really hot around here, we start brewing Belgians, you know, Germans, Belgians, right. things that don't mind the heat. You know, hmm. we keep the ambient temperature in the room low but we don't have full control okay right so you know in the spring winter fall we can really do just about anything so we try and do most of our brewing then and then we'll brew our fall when our, our german belgian beers in the summertime for the fall well i wondered about the control piece because i've been here during the summer and it is a blast furnace i mean yeah. <laughs> it's go right. and so it totally makes sense that you move into the belgians and the saison yeah. some of that stuff where it's like all right, the esters are okay. We're just going to roll with what we've got, right? right? So, right. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So um, talk to me a little bit about the business model. So you guys have a uh, food cart type set up for your kitchen out there, it looks right. like. Um, traditional bar set up here in the mm -hmm. main area, and then a lot of outdoor seating, which is great. Yeah. Um, what, is, what, is tra I mean, what is the busy time for you? Is it the weekends? Is it the summers? We pretty much start Memorial Day weekend as kind of the big kickoff. Okay. And then it starts to taper out about when school goes back in. So, you know, big through the summer. And then we have the shoulder seasons where we have the hunters. Mm. There's a lot of hunting through here. And then we're pretty uh, quiet throughout the winter. You know, we're open year round 365. Now, well, 363, you know, you got to take Christmas off. But, uh, you know, December, January, February. Not a lot. We spend a lot of time looking at each other around here. Yeah. <laughs> but we're available for the people that are passing through. And, you know, we, just, we account for that. Plus, you know, I want to keep my employees working throughout the year. Right. So, you know, it's like we just prepare for it. That's sweet. Well, um, so then I see you do movie nights. Uh, movie nights in the summer start to kick in. Are you guys going to still do that? I don't. I, you know, they keep changing what's available. Usually in June we have our Taggartown Music Festival. And that's not going to happen this year. And we, the last festival we have is the Painted Hills Festival in, in September. Okay. And that's not able to happen this year. So I'm not sure if we'll fill in with some small gigs or movie nights. It'll depend a lot on what the, uh, you know, social distancing stay-at-home orders do. Because right. you know, if we put music on the stage, I can't guarantee that, you know. People are going to be spaced right. appropriately, right? right? People are rocking and rolling, man. They're right. not going to be hanging out. So... And then I understand you're a veteran. So um, yeah. did you do any brewing in the service at all? Did you I have time to brew? I didn't. No, I moved out to Mitchell nine years ago. And I took up brewing because I had been a career musician for about 20 years in Portland. I moved out here. I needed something to do with my time. And uh, I started working as the uh, park ranger at the Painted Hills. Oh, wow. 
So I did that for a few years, and I started home brewing. And people kept saying, "Hey, we'd like to buy some beer." I'm like, "Well, I can't sell you beer, but I can give you beer." <laughs> right. And I ended up giving away most of what I made. And finally, a buddy that owns this building said, "Hey, why don't we just put a brewery in there?" And you know, the ball started rolling. And it's awesome. Yeah, it was about seven years ago we started coming up with the idea, and a couple of years after that we opened up, and now here we are. So talk to me about the name. I I get the name. So talk yeah. to the listeners about the name. How you chose the name. So Mitchell is a, now it's a cattle town, but before that it was a mining town, a logging town, and it was just kind of a rough and tumble town. And it's kind of two parts. We have, we have a large hill where all the houses are, and we call that Piety Hill because that's where the churches and the houses and everything okay. are. Down here on Main Street is where all the bars and brothels stood, and so the nickname for this area was Tiger Town. Hmm. And it's uh, just something that we resurrected for this place because... The, felt it was indicative of the uh, pioneer spirit out here. Yeah, totally. And then the town itself, Mitchell, uh, two varying different stories, as, as I see on the uh, website, right. right? So one is the uh, U.S. senator that was uh, the town is officially named after right. in theory, right? So the other is this interesting thing about a wagon making a whiskey run down to what burns or something, breaks down in this spot, says, you know what? F it. We're going to uh, make a whiskey. We're going to make a bar. Precisely. Right. So, And we've got an old Mitchell wagon side sitting on our wall up fantastic. there. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the more fun story anyway. Yeah, the lore is fantastic. I yeah. love it. I mean, you drive in the town. It's a small town. A lot of people going on. A lot of people outside on a day like this. Right. right? And then the lore of something like that. I'm telling my son, my teenage son about it. And he's like, well, I want to see the wagon. <laughs> I want, yeah. And so I just think, I think it sticks, man. It's a good right? good good story so yeah, this, this is still the wild west you know? yeah. It, yeah well it's, it's out there right it's two hours out from bend right. and so good well i really really appreciate your time so uh it, it's fantastic beers here so thank you had a good time uh getting to know it i would encourage the listeners to check out tiger town here in mitchell oregon uh again eight miles from painted hills yep. so uh it is crazy busy today so a lot of people out there uh very very busy here but again we had no problems finding a seat so Visit Tiger Town, and uh, with that, I appreciate it. Take care, man. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Huge thanks to Sean from Tiger Town Brewing. Pretty good interview, man. Sounds mm. like it. Yeah. Yeah. You could hear the uh, cool room kicking on there a little <laughs> bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just crazy. So first of all, it's two hours out from Bend, right? Um, and I just pulled up a map to take a look at how if I were to drive to Tiger Town from Tiger. How long would it take me? And it's four hours and one minute, 225 miles. Yeah. So, um, and you head out to the Dalles and then head south through Fossil and into Mitchell. And I'm telling you, there's like five businesses in this town. Um, the Bed and Breakfast Hotel is up for sale in the middle of town. And it looks like the little town of Radiator Springs in kind of, but with like less buildings. From the Cars movies? Yeah. That type of thing? Yeah. yeah. I and mean, it's just crazy. Like, And it's off the path. Like, the highway goes past it. You actually have to turn off and dog lake off it. Right. So you'd miss this place. But well, it's literally, I think the population they said was 120 people. And I'm saying that is generous. <laughs> so, because I think the whole county may have that population. <laughs> so, I would say there's probably... 40 or 50, like, within about a 10-mile radius. Which, place, which is right? mind-boggling that they were able to, to pull a brewery off Well, yeah, with that population. It's fascinating. And the three owners, Robert Cannon, Eric, uh, and then Sean there, Yeah, um, Robert and Eric were uh, fifth generation or some, some generation of Mitchell folks, and they joined the service and took off. Right. But one of their dads, if I remember right... Um, owned the bunch of the buildings in town and the two brothers were like hey we got this idea we should open this brewery and that's where sean jumps in as he's home brewing beer over at the national park service in yeah. painted hills and they like hey we got this building let's try this out dude the place is popping like who would have thought that that was going to be other than these three guys that that yeah. would have worked there living the dream literally in five years and they've been going for five years, dude. And they're expanding their system. Yeah, and he says they just keep getting bigger every year. So Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. So the other thing I found interesting is their temperature control. They know what their weakness is. So yes. So they're like, yeah, we brew ales because we can't lager. And the beauty of that is is they know the weakness and they played to it. Absolutely. 
And so then, not only do they do that, they're like, yeah, we know if we don't have beers done by mid-June, the outside ambient temperature is about 100 degrees. Yeah. There's no way we're going to be able to lager at 60. Right. Or not lager, but ferment at 60. So we're just going to make Saison's. We're just going to let it do what it needs to do at a higher temperature, and we'll try to keep it beneath 70 or 80. Yeah. And we'll have some estuary-type beers. But uh, that said, our summer beers are going to taste totally different than the beers that we made in February. Right. And then they also are just brewing beers like crazy all the way through the winter to get through the tour season. Right. So I love it. Awesome story. They had a Rauk beer. They also had the Scotch Ale, which was ridiculous. Their Scotch Ale by far was their best beer, I thought. Well, and that's, that's the one he really loves to brew. Yeah, and it was so good, man. So, well, check these guys out. Um, again, massive thanks to Sean Hawkins. Dude is awesome. And uh, Robert, Eric, and Sean, you guys are popping there. Mitchell, again, thanks for your time. I think Gary and I are going to make a, a road trip out to eastern Oregon and maybe hit parts of Washington at some point. And maybe we'll have to swing through and check you guys out again so it's not too far off the beaten path. Yeah, definitely. So, all right, buddy. Well, we started off with a uh, beer from a little road stop I took. I, On my little part of the vacation, I headed up to Montana and uh, stopped at a bunch of breweries up there. Also connected with some folks that we've been trying to do some interviews with <clears throat> to try to set that up. We'll talk about that. But uh, we started off the podcast by drinking an amber ale from Flathead Lake Brewing. Yeah. Have you been to Flathead Lake, dude? I have. It's absolutely gorgeous. Holy shit. Yeah. Amazing place. It's like the uh, third greatest source of fresh water in the United States. Right. It's this massive lake. It's like 40 miles long. Yeah. Um, and at the very tippy top, you know what's up there? Glacier National Park. And you know what's just to the left of Glacier National? Hmm. Whitefish, Montana. Oh, yes. Great place to ski. <laughs> uh, Great place to ski. So uh, we took the train up to Whitefish several years ago, and you jump on in Portland, and you go to bed, and you wake up, and you're in Whitefish. Yeah, you guys got to ski with the snow ghosts. That's right, the hoodoos that you do, baby. Yep. So um, I had no idea we were so close, but uh, again, stopped in this town, a big fork at the top of Flat Lake yep. before you peel off and hit uh glacier national and i was so impressed with this beer and the second beer or the third beer we're going to try tonight um but this amber ale is like one of the best amber ales that i think i've ever had it reminds me a lot of what full sales amber originally was mm. when they like had smaller batching a little bit more control i think yeah um it was less production focused it's got the caramely notes it's balanced it's super super good yeah it was a really good beer so Beautiful, beautiful amber color on it. But again, Flathead Lake uh, Brewing's Amber Ale. Fantastic beer. And then the second one, which is interesting. Yeah. This uh, is a good light beer. Yeah, this is a great light beer. I love this beer. So this beer is from Big Sky Brewing. And interestingly enough, I had this beer on a paddleboard out in the middle of Frenchtown Pond, which is a little bit past the brewery, but close. Um, this bottle, though, is interesting because this came from the refrigerator of the Airbnb I stayed at. So they gave us beer. Well, interesting story. The yeah. pot, pot shop Airbnb. Um, <laughs> like behind the pot shop. So, But they gave you free beers in the fridge. So I snagged this because I was like, oh, we'll do this on the podcast. Yeah, great idea. So this is the Summer Honey Seasonal Ale. And it's an ale brewed with honey and spices. Um, super light, but man, it's a great beer. It is delicious. Yeah. Yes. Again, Big Skies uh, Brewing, Summer Honey, uh, very golden color, very light. Definitely the sweetness of the honey on board. Mm -hmm. Not sure what we're pulling spice wise. You taste any spices? You know, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm, that's where I'm not picking up a lot at all, uh, which is probably a good thing because I'm not real big on spices in beers. Um, but whatever they used, they they used the right combination uh, with the honey to just make it a very, very smooth drinking, very easy drinking beer. Yeah, maybe getting a little bit of coriander out of it or something, but um, it like I said, very subtle. So, but very good, good beer. So, um, 
So we'll talk a little bit about the other breweries that we hit here in a second, but we owe the guys at Thunder Island Brewing uh, an explanation why we haven't produced their podcast. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> Huge explanation. So we set up, uh, right after Memorial Day, a road trip out to Thunder Island Brewing and visited their new brewery. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, our mascot, Tim, came with us. Yeah. So. <laughs> and... Uh, it was it was a great time. The guys at Thunder Island were awesome. Very gracious. Yes. Very gracious guys. But uh yeah, lots of stuff's been happening. So first of all, the interview went about two hours and forty five minutes. That's the total record time that we had. Yeah. Long interview, but it it was an awesome interview. I mean it, it every bit of it I thought was great. So there's a lot of editing that's gotta take place. Um, I have not even opened up the damn thing to edit it. And then you've been working, I've been working, but we went on yeah, vacation. It, well, and I think the big thing was is is pretty much right after that, I got smacked with a, a special assignment for my job that that caused uh, some, some major difficulties in trying to record. I uh, went back to back for two straight weeks, so we, we couldn't record on the Sundays that we wanted to do, or any other day for that matter. So that put a big dent in it. So, again, big, big uh, thanks to those guys. Dave Lips out there, owner. Um, you were a gracious host. We, in the next few weeks, will have uh, probably a part one and a part two of that interview. Like a two-part. We haven't really done a two-part ever. No, and, and I think this one kind of lends itself to that just because it was a longer interview, but... It, it was a, a quality longer interview. It wasn't something we have to go in and cut a bunch of stuff out, which is nice. Yeah, it was massive, massive um, content. So yes, I mean, and everything from trying the award-winning saffron beer to uh, <laughs> the award-winning. <laughs> I don't know what award that won. <laughs> it won the awesome award. Mo- so. Most most likely beer to never be brewed again. No, it won the Green Apple Award. Oh, that's right. It How did. the hell he pulled green apple out of that saffron? Both overlay? of them did. Yeah, I know. That's what's crazy. I don't yeah. know how they pulled that out from under I all that, taste. all that floral tone. Yeah, it's my funeral parlor beer. Come on, man, you can't get green apple out of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, no. So awesome, awesome time at Thunder Island, and we will post that here soon. Um, after some editing, I did listen to the sound quality. It sounds perfect. So. Um, but again, we need to work on that. Yes. So, sorry guys, but coming soon. What else? So, what else been going? You been brewing, dude? Uh, no. Why? Um, what's going on with you? <laughs> I think I think it's been brought up a couple times in this uh, episode. My work schedule has literally just crippled me as far as doing anything else but work and sleep. Oh. Um. Yeah, so brewing's not really, really uh, lend itself to, to being done, especially with the hours that I've kept. Being able to try and pull off a, a, a full brew session is just it hasn't happened. Yeah. Um, well, what do you think about brewing? So I know we talked about in the pre-show that uh, you got your eyes on a recipe. What are you looking at? Yeah, the funny thing is, is, is you know, for some reason I've had my mind stuck that I wanted to do another Kolsch. Oh. Um, and then I think more about that, though, and to do the Kolsch that I want to do, I'm going to have to go get the greens. I'm going to have to go get the hops. I'm going to have to get, you know, I'm going to have to get everything. So I'm going to have to go shopping for it. So I was like, you know what? Let's let's go with a little different route. Let's let's break my let's let's break outside the comfort zone here. Let's do just a one grain malt brew with existing grain that I have and some of the existing hops I have, then all I have to do is come up with a um, a yeast strain. And I'm thinking, well, hell, let's do a lager. Let's see how that comes out. No, that'd be badass. And you, when is the last time you did a lager? Have you done a lager before? I have. Um, I think it was a year and a half ago We did when we did our Oktoberfest beers. I did minus oh, a lager. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. But that's the last time I've done a lager, so... Huh. It'll be interesting to see how I can pull that off. If I don't burn up my um, 
my electronic temperature controller <laughs> doing one, but... Yeah, you've been fighting that ETC unit anyway, yeah, so this I will have, truly and, test it out. And I have a feeling I'm going to fry that thing, trying to keep everything nice and cold uh, on this next brew cycle. Yeah, it'll be interesting, especially if it starts to heat up or anything. I mean, that'll be interesting to see. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see what the beer does. <laughs> Well, or I'm just talking about in general the ETC unit trying to keep things cold if it gets. Again. Yeah, mm. um, and I've looked at the weather for probably the next ten days, and, and it, there's really no major hot days. Like 78, I think, is the hottest it's supposed to get. Huh. interesting. That'll be good. Well, let's take a break. We'll come back and talk a little bit about uh, what I'm doing brew wise, and then. Um, talk about a few more breweries in montana there stuff that we've tried yeah um try a last beer here that we've got sitting here staring at us in the face and uh we'll go from there so we'll be back cool are you ready quartet mm. all right let's go drink to me darling not with thine eyes but with past blue ribbon Cause if you toast me with that blue ribbon, I'll know that your love's sincere. The beer that is splendid is the beer that is blended from 33 fine brews. And if you serve me sparkling clear, perhaps your love, dear, I can't. Refuse. You can serve it with cold cuts and you're too pleased. Serve it with a dab of tasty nippy cheese. Now a smooth refreshing, it has no flaws. And anywhere they have the beer, the bottle is because I've grown a million laps for a bottle of half blue All right, we're back. So uh, just poured another beer here. Yeah. Send this over to you. So this is uh, from Spider City Brewing. This is from uh, Memorial Day weekend. I had a crowler of this made because it was so fantastic. Hmm. Uh, it's nice and light. It is. Well, I, we were going to try this Imperial Stout, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's too hot. Not a good idea. So Flathead Lake, we'll try your uh, Imperial Stout a different day, probably like the fall. <laughs> That's what I was waiting for. What? What did you do that? What's God wrong? Damn. <laughs> um. What do you got? I'm not sure what you got. Yeah, but. I got a pucker face going here. <laughs> uh, God, what do I? Th- I'm trying to think of the the uh, beer style that is like drinking salt water. Um, go say. Yeah, I think you you just go say'd me. If I uh if I'm guessing correct. Yep, you are. So this is the Kafir Lime Sea Salt Go say. You know, I kind of like City. that. You know, after after getting slapped down with the first sip, uh you go back for more. And and I I really like the way they they did their combination, that lime right up front. Yep. And then you get that little bit of saltiness on the back. Yep. And it, uh, believe it or not, it's kind of refreshing. Yeah, it's not bad at all, dude. Which it, I would have never thought a gose would be used in the same sentence as refreshing. It's nice, salty, lightly um, salted. Yeah, it's lime. Kind, of, kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was uh, well worth it, and uh, I was like, you know what, this is a good one. We'll break it's, this. It's up almost, somewhere. it's almost like bolt biting into one of those. Uh, Lime sea salt chips. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of salt, yeah. a little bit of lime on the front. Yeah, no, it's a good beer. So, well, so. I'll bet that'd be fantastic on the river on a super hot day. Oh, I think so too. Yeah. Yeah, Spider City, you should think about canning this bad boy. So. Yes. Because this is just a crowler. Little 32 ounce baby. <sighs> Um, so you talked a little bit about what you've got kind of planned for brewing and yeah. time being your enemy at this point. But <laughs> Huge enemy. You'll conquer that enemy. So I decided to sell my stout tank setup. I have a gas-fired stout tank setup that we've been... Yeah, how the hell are you going to burn out? So, and I successfully sold the mash tun. Yeah. 
And now I'm getting ready to repost the uh, brew kettle. I have a nine gallon brew kettle with uh, the tangential uh, whirlpool on it. So we're going to repost that, try to get that going. And But that said, I found a device or brew system that I wanted to go with. Yeah. Because it more or less just saves me space. But I got intrigued with the marketing of this thing. And it's called the Anvil Foundry. And really I caught up with uh, kind of the Nintendo craze of the thing where everybody's lining up trying to get the thing. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I want to be the guy that lines up and get in line. So by the time I went to go get them, they're, they're sold out. You're on a wait list. Yeah, well, I wasn't even on the wait list. I couldn't even get on the wait list. Damn. They basically said, nope, uh, we'll let you know when the wait list is going to open. Holy smokes. So for a month I went, like, literally with nothing, just waiting. And yeah. so I'm like, well, I guess I'm not going to brew for a while. And um, so finally I got an email last week. I believe it was Thursday morning. Oh, no, I got an email Wednesday that Thursday they were going to do, I might have my timing shorter, but it was last week, they were going to do pre-sales and for delivery in July. So, And it was at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And I'm like, oh, shit. So 7 o'clock I get to work and I'm all fired up. I'm like, all right, logged on to the page, made an account, set myself up, ready to go. And I'm like, I'm ready to go. I'm going to add to the cart right now just to make sure they're not messing with me. System crashed. Nope. It sure as heck kicked it out. Said none are available. I'm like, okay, cool, no worries. <laughs> so 15 minutes later, what I do? Add to cart. Nothing. Nothing. So for 50, every 15 minutes, I went back and tried to add to cart. Yeah. Guess what? Nothing, Nothing. happened. Nine o'clock, the time the thing's supposed to happen. Yeah. Add to cart. Nothing. Nothing. Oh. So now I'm like, oh shit. So every 30 seconds the after nine o'clock. Yeah, I'm like, oh. Well, crap. So every 30 seconds, add to cart, add to cart, add to cart. 9.02, one went to the cart. Ooh. Yeah, and I was like, boom. Score. And put all my stuff as fast as I can, put the address in, put the credit card in, do the whole thing. I am now officially on the wait list. Ooh. And I still don't have a brewer. <laughs> so, <laughs> they could come back and say, you know what? Uh, yeah, the boat sunk. <laughs> You're not getting one. Yeah. Yeah, they so. could say that. Hurricane hits the boat. Everything sank. You got nada. So I think this thing's going to simplify my brewing process. Um, anybody that's followed my brew journey started in like the 90s, brewing in carboys with spaghetti pots and or plastic buckets and all that stuff, and then went stainless when Gary went stainless, and I've loved my stout tank setup. I looked at an all electrical system by stout tanks, but to do it, it was going to be like 1500 bucks. Yeah. And so I'm like, God, I have the Tesla in the garage. I kind of have 220 built in. I need to go 220 and get away from this gas thing. And uh, this foundry thing popped. And so I'm going to play the ad of what the foundry is. The foundry is an all in one brewing system that includes virtually everything you need to brew awesome beer. Our 16-pound grain capacity mash basket provides 150% more filtration area for no stuck mashes. Wired standard for 120 volt, yet can convert easily to 240 volt. Ultra low watt density heating with triple heating elements to reduce scorching. Double wall insulation for faster heating and better boil intensity. Rotating racking arm for sediment free transfers. Increase efficiency and have clearer warp with the optional recirculation pump kit. Permanently stamped level graduations. Linear digital power control. Includes immersion chiller with hoses and fittings. Distillation ready with a Turbo 500 distillation kit sold separately. For more information, visit anvilbrewing.com. So did you catch that at the very end? Yeah, you can make your own hand sanitizer. <laughs> I love it. Or lavender essence. No, keep that shit away from me. <laughs> I don't want to die. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's an all-in-one brew system. It's uh, electro electronically controlled. It goes 220. It can be on run off 110 if you want. Right. Um, and it's essentially what you have, which is the BIAB, but with a um, stainless mesh 
basket, essentially. Right. Yep. So, um, yeah, it'll be nice. So the only thing it won't do that's different than yours is the heating and cooling that way and the fermentation in the same vessel. But um, I've got the stop tanks and kettles fermenter, so I'm yeah. comfortable with that. Yeah. In, in, and I like that separate fermenter because it doesn't tie up the Exactly. Brew you're you're kind of getting the best of both worlds with that because you can transfer out, do your ferment, and then go right into another brew cycle. Right. Where I cannot do that. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see uh, when this thing comes. Our buddies over at Genus Brewing have uh, used the hell out of theirs. <laughs> so we've been watching them. They've done, of course, several batches within theirs, testing it to the limits. Yes. Um, how much grain can it actually do versus um, what it states it can do. And then also not even using it as a power source, but throwing hot rocks, so kind of a stein beer in it, where they're heating rocks in a fire and making making it boil in the anvil. So right. Rumors that they've uh, ruined it temporarily <laughs> uh, by doing that little <laughs> shamdango. So... <laughs> But, um, yeah, so we'll see. By mid-July, hopefully I have this bad boy and um, we'll get brewing. a batch going. Yeah, hopefully by beginning of August I'll be brewing something. So. Well, it, it just won't be something. It'll be the world famous. Which one? Well, you got to go with a freaking Oktoberfest beer. Yeah, and uh, i got to get that going. Yeah. So, and that probably, you're right, because in my head I was like, oh, i got to get a tangerine because I have that tangerine pouch. Yeah. So the question is, do you want to use the tangerine in something, in that single malt that you're going to do? do you like, know, that might be good, actually. Tangerine with those Phoenix hops? Yeah. Do you want to do that? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna I'll s- do that. I'll get, remind me, and we'll pull that out. Okay. So. Yeah. But yeah, I... Those guys at Oregon Fruit gave me the tangerine, and I'm like, ah, I need to do something. But yeah. if this thing doesn't come till August, no, you're going to be kind of hosed. A tangerine Kolsch would have been fantastic. Oh, yeah, we'll have to try that next summer. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I think the tangerine single malt will be fantastic. So because it'll have the clean single malt, right, and be able to do that. Yeah, so, that but. clean, crisp refreshing on the river flavor but you're right i'm probably moving into oktoberfest and then you know what comes after oktoberfest a uh, christmas beer abyss no just christmas beer. <laughs> i don't want to fall into the abyss yeah, yeah no we're gonna fall into the abyss because i got a bunch left no so. tim texted me his favorite of the two was the half widow half abyss really that's what i said i was like I didn't think that was that good and i'm gonna have to go back uh, and revisit it no yeah you and i tasted that and we were like mm-mm yeah, it wasn't right no, at all. Something's off. So but maybe it mellowed out. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? Whatever. Well, so one of the uh, small batch things. I guess I could be doing this for a while, but I did some small batching. We talked about in the last podcast yeah. where I took the same cream ale recipe, took four different hop varietals, and boiled during the hop edition. Um, essentially a liter and a half of the wort with four different hop varietals. Right. So Cascade, Centennial, Mount Hood, and Saint Em. So same recipe, same same uh, technique, everything everything's the same except the hop. Yep. I even boiled them at the same time, so the times are all identical. Um, fermented them side by side, same yeast, same everything. So Yeah bottled those there's been sitting for a while so next episode of the portland timbers we will crack those and try those side by side to see what the different hops taste like the next episode of tim beers in june of 2021 (laughs) yeah so the way we're going so (laughs) the then i after i bottled those i was like hey you know what let's do something slightly different let's take that cream ale recipe yeah do the cream ale recipe but do four liters with the same hop so i picked i believe a cascade hop and the only difference now is that i use four different yeast strains oh boy so i have a wheat yeast strain yeah so it's a german wheat i have a english ale i have a i'm testing my memory i have uh oh i have a saison uh-huh. yeast strain and then I had a standard, like, American ale, California ale type uh, yeast strain. Yeah. So um, we're going to see what they are. No, I take that back. I didn't have a size on. 
I had a Belgian, uh, like a monastery type. Uh, oh, okay, like an abbey? Yeah, like an abbey. Yeah. So, and I'll tell you, the abbey was, when I went to Bottle, the abbey was like <laughs> funked. I was like, funk. I was like, yep, that's abbey. <laughs> Um, and the only difference there, same recipe, they did their thing, cleaning was the same, everything was perfect. Yeah. Was that yeast. And the Abbey is true to form, an Abbey Ale. So does its, does its weird, funky thing. The American Ale, crystal clear. Yeah. Like, everything else was clouded, like the Hef was clouded, the Abbey was clouded. Yeah. The English was high flock, it was like totally clouded. The American, crystal clear. Nice. Yep. And then everything else smelled roughly the same, but yeah, that that Abbey one one was. Woo. <laughs> so we've got those sitting; they'll be ready in a couple weeks. Then we'll try those on a side by side. Cool. And then I got to think about all right, how I'm going to take that cream ale and how do we make it different next time? Well, now has it been the same cream ale recipe for both experiments? Yep. So that'll be interesting because then you can you can see one which hop varietal do you like the best. And then on the second round, you, what uh, what yeast strain do I like the best? With that hop varietal. So with really, that hop varietal. Really, you could do three other hop varietals yeah. with you, you four could. yeast strains. Yeah, yeah. Just, to, just to find out which which one of those hop varietals goes best with what hop uh, or what uh, yeast strains. Yeah, yeah. So that might be something to toy with uh, while I'm waiting for that anvil foundry to come. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So the other thing about Anvil is the Anvil Foundry stuff is made by Blickman, and Blickman's known for, again, producing high-quality stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, so the next obvious question is why I didn't go with stout tanks. We kind of addressed that. Um, again, the price was just too high. They couldn't they couldn't compete, and I talked to Tyler a couple times over there at Stout Tanks, and it's just didn't seem, for the amount of money, um, Blickman and Foundry just offered more and i was just wasn't willing to shell out a couple thousand dollars for something right um and then again all the pizzazz is on this foundry so i certainly got caught up on this nintendo wii phase of oh shit i gotta have one so so we'll see i pushed my chips to the center of the table because i don't have a mash ton and i soon won't have a uh, brew kettle no exactly you're you're kind of (laughs) stuck in uh you're in uh, limbo right now i'm in one gallon batch limbo (laughs) But it's kind of fun because I'm getting to experiment and do some stuff I haven't done for a long time. Yeah, and I think you'll be able to dial your batches in, too, to, to what exactly it is you want to brew um, and and be able to control those factors a little more with just your, your little one-gallon batches versus trying to do a five-gallon batch and trying that same experiment. Well, that was the question somebody asked. It takes so much longer. How easy is it going to be to scale back up those one-gallon recipes? Um, I, I think with the software that's out there today, it's really not going to be that big of a challenge. Right, and that's what I said. I'm like, what but they it, didn't it have when I was be. 20 years ago, they didn't have the software. Yeah, and 20 years ago, then it might be a little more challenging. But, right. Um, but it should be pretty easy to scale that stuff back up. the software now, you can probably dial that in damn near to the exact same beer. That's what I think. So, yeah, we'll see how this shakes out. And, well, again, next episode... Either do a 4Z or do a uh, do an 80. Yeah. Do eight beers side by side. Woo. They're just little little bad boys. I'm going to have to have like a four-day off uh, thing to pull that off. No, we're going to do one day when uh, you've got to be at work at 7 a.m. Because <laughs> that's what I've got to do, baby. <laughs> Screw that. No, I know. So. <laughs> All right. Well, we've covered quite a bit of territory, dude. We have. So, um... Talked a little bit about Tiger Town Brewing and a huge thanks to those guys out there for the interview, the beers, and all that good stuff. Yep. Um, Dave Lips, Thunder Island. We got a uh, Thunder two, Island. We got to get your step process and out there. Two part series coming at you soon. It's huge. But uh, I got to tell you, check those guys out, man. We went to their original location down on the water on Cascade Locks. Yeah. Had a burger and some beers and freaking phenomenal man you, you know that that location is pretty cool but i think their new location is going to be really phenomenal especially with the rooftop seating yep totally it's going to be amazing yep um and so you'll hear about that i believe we actually got some interview up on that rooftop we did so. yeah um and then talked a little bit about uh the trip to montana visited no lee brewing big sky brewing tamarack brewing flathead brewing lolo peak brewing 
And then also hung out with the guys over at Genus Brewing and uh, saw Peter out there. We've been trying to do an episode with those guys. For um, thanks for providing me some samples of some great funked up beers over there. Um, but yeah, we need to get the guys from Genus on and kind of talk about uh, what's going on and in their land. They've got a pretty big shift when uh, they went from a small original location where they were doing homebrew stuff to this major, this beautiful building now, which yeah. is a brewery and just a few homebrew items inside. So we'll talk about that business model, hopefully, with Peter and those guys. And then, uh, and then I also decided that we need to road trip to Spokane because Spokane is badass from when I was there last. Really? Yeah. Well, so I was in the Air Force in Spokane. Yeah, yeah. And there was yeah. one beer place called The Viking. <laughs> and The Viking was like a trailer in the middle of downtown Spokane that yeah. served like 70 taps of beer, some ungodly thing. Most of it was like <clears throat> Stroh's and Pabst and all this crap. Yeah. So, um, but you could go there and get a good pint of beer. Um, but there was no real craft beer brewery. Um you would go to Jim's Homebrew Shop in northern Spokane, and that's where I got my first uh, ingredients I brewed on the base. But outside of that, that was the only real exposure to homebrewing or craft beer that you had. Well, you yeah. go there now, and there's like 40 breweries in Spokane or in the surrounding area. It's, it's like crazy. Ridiculous. So, And we'll go out there and hang out with those guys, maybe do a, uh, a collab batch or something. Maybe they'll... Oh, yeah. Maybe hang out with us and do that. So. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Maybe uh, do a, we could do something crazy, like brew on the Spokane River on a boat, brew dog style. Uh, four paddle boards tied together. There we go. See? There yeah. we go. We'll throw that out to you, Peter. See if we can make that happen. <laughs> so, um, Anyways, uh, big thanks to Noli. Uh, great beers there in Spokane. Check them out. They were brewery of the year in 2000, small brewery of the year in 2015. Big Sky Brewing, awesome beers, Tamarack, good beers as well, and Flathead Lake Brewing. Um, we'll try your Imperial Stout on one of the next episodes. Um, but with that, I think that's all we got, buddy. Hopefully uh, we're back here in a couple weeks. You got anything else to add? I got nothing. Tim Beers. Thanks for listening to the Portland Tim Beers Podcast. Be sure to visit the Portland Tim Beers Podcast on ACAST.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. If you love the Tim Beers Podcast, we'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give a review on iTunes. Until next time, Tim Beers. Tim Beers.